and welcome to this week's YouTube video. This is video number two of a three part series on using gold leaf in your paintings. Today I am going to show you how I painted the cockatoos. In last week's video I showed you how I did the gold leafing on the background. So have a look at that one if you haven't seen it already. I will be painting in oils and using my regular palette. Check out the item description for the colours. Before we get into the painting, I want to show you the colour mixing as I will not be using black in this painting at all. There is a lot of colour in white and I wanted to show you quickly how to make colourful greys. For my dark areas, I will be using cadmium red mixed with ultramarine deep. For my mid greys, I will be using a combination of either purple greys, so cad red, ultramarine deep and white. This will be my cool greys. If I want to warm this up, I will either add orange, yellow ochre light plus cad red to this mix, or cad yellow. I will then lighten if I need to with white. So my base grey will be a purple which I will warm with either orange or yellow depending upon what kind of grey I want to make. Note also you can make your purple more of a cool purple or a warm purple depending upon how much red or blue you use. Let's now get straight into the painting video where I will show you how I painted the cockatoos. The painting time is approximately 35 minutes. I have speeded this video up slightly as it would have been so long if I hadn't and I would have run into upload issues, but I still think you can see what I'm doing clearly. I will try to provide as much commentary on what I'm doing as I can. However, it can be quite hard to talk non-stop for 35 minutes and so there will be times where I go quiet. Please do not adjust your volume, I am just not speaking. The first part of this painting is just a block in. I am trying to get down a general colour and value of what I am seeing. At this stage I am using a little gamsole to thin my paint. This is just to help make the paint a bit more fluid so I can get it on as quickly as possible. For the beaks I am using Cad Red plus Ultramarine Deep. For the plumes, I am using Cad Yellow plus White. I am also using a flat brush by Artmaster. I like these brushes and use them often as my general workhorse brushes. They are cheap and have a nice feel so I don't really mind if they get wrecked. The light yellow is acting as my base, but I am going in again with a stronger cadmium yellow for my darker, more vibrant areas. I am pretty much using the paint straight out of the tube. For the darker, cooler areas of the plume, I am mixing my cadmium yellow with my purple. Moving on to the bodies, I am starting with my darker areas. The light in my reference photo is cool, so my shadows are going to be warm. Remember the rule, warm light equals cool shadows, cool light equals warm shadows. So I am adding orange to my purple. This is still part of the blocking in, so I am still using my mineral spirits to thin my paint a little. I'm trying to block the majority of my darker areas in all in one go using my purple plus orange. As this is a compositional piece, I am having to manipulate my colours a little to make it work. 
Don't be afraid to, to depart from your reference photo and to mix things up a bit. All you need to do is identify what value and temperature you are looking at and then you can substitute the reference photo colour for a different colour and it will still work. As long as it is the same value and temperature, you'll be fine. At this stage, I am really just trying to get a correct average value and correct average temperature established. So I am flicking between a cooler grey and a warmer grey to create that sense of form. That's my first layer done. I will leave that to dry overnight and have another go at it the next day. For my plumage, I am now adding orange to my cadmium yellow plus purple to make it warmer. For my cooler areas, I am using cadmium yellow plus purple. I'm using my long haired coma brush to soften my edges. There's a lot of temperature changes in that plumage, so I'm just trying to be mindful of that when painting and transition between my warm and cool colours. I have talked in previous videos about the importance of edges in your paintings. Hard edges can make things seem very unrealistic. However, in this painting, getting soft edges everywhere I want is not possible. Usually, I would pull the paint from my subjects into the background paint, but it's a little hard here as it's covered in gold leaf. So for the purpose of this painting, I am not worrying too much about the harder edges surrounding my birds. Sometimes you have to work within the limitations of what you are doing. I'm using a very fine rigger brush just to be a bit more accurate with some of my detail. I'm swapping my brushes a lot depending upon what sort of marks I want to make. I'm working really hard on that plumage to try and counteract my issues of hard exterior edges. In the end, I had to accept the limitations of what I was able to do simply because I didn't have wet malleable paint to drag my plumage into. I didn't want to lose the lovely effect I had on the gold leaf with my transparencies. I might have been able to overcome this issue if I had painted my birds immediately after doing the background. This is something I would probably try if I were doing it again. For my lighter areas on the plumage, I am using cadmium yellow plus white. 
I started with the plumage because it seemed the area that was most obvious to me in terms of colour and it would affect how I viewed the painting. So I wanted to put it in first because my white areas are much more subtle. It's always good to start with your most obvious areas as it will help establish an anchor point from which the rest of the painting can grow. Moving on to the body, I'm starting off with a blocking in brush to get it covered in paint as fast as I can. I am using purple plus cadmium yellow plus white, but it's leaning heavier on the yellow to give me that lovely warm grey. If I want to warm it up more, I either add orange or a bit more yellow. To cool it down, I add more purple and white. Because I am using the same yellow in my body that I use for my plumage, I am creating a much more harmonious painting. This is why you should make your greys out of colour rather than using black. There is no colour in black. Black would only work if you were using it as a substitute for your blue. Ivory black does have a blue leaning and so can be used as a blue. If you want to use black on white objects, Substitute the black for your blue and mix your black in where I am mixing in blue to my colours. You'll see for my really dark areas, I am mixing orange into my purple, so my shadows are very warm. It's quite amazing how dark those birds actually are in value. This is the tricky thing about white objects. They can have quite a wide value range, so you must paint what you see, not what you think you see. I am using my cadmium red plus blue for the beaks. Adding a bit of white to this will turn it into a much cooler grey. I've swapped onto my coma brushes now because I want to start pulling that paint around. 
The long soft nature of the hairs of this brush allow me to do this without taking off paint. I am working hard at trying to get those temperatures correct. It is really important as getting the correct shifts is what will give my cockatoos a sense of believability and stop them from looking flat. If you have ever looked at a painting and thought it just looks flat, part of the reason will be incorrect temperature shifts. What you need to establish is a shift from either warm to cool to warm or from cool to warm to cool. I cannot stress how important this is. Because there is quite a lot of paint on that bird already, I am able to push and pull my strokes around. I think the biggest mistake artists make when trying to paint feathers is to try and paint the detail of every single feather. If you are finding this is something you are doing, try working from a correct size printed image. For example, in this instance, my painting was about 30 centimetres by 45 centimetres. So I printed an image that size. I then pinned this image to a wall at, at least two metres away and worked from that. This will stop you focusing on detail. Alternatively, you can squint down on your reference photo. That will have a similar effect. Applying your brushwork in a loose and expressive way will also help to create the sense of a collection of feathers. You will find that as the painting is slightly disturbed from the previous layers, this will create an effect that also looks like plumage. This will occur naturally if you keep varying your brushes between softer and harder brushes. My blocking brush will take off paint, whereas my comas don't. You can see clearly from this painting that I am not trying to paint the detail, but a general sense of what I am looking at. It is best not to work solely from an iPad or iPhone. Have other images to help you as well. For my really light areas, I am just using white, but I will blend this white into colours around it and try and soften my edges. I am using a very fine coma brush for the details around the eye, blending in my white and paying attention to my shifting temperatures. At the bottom of the eye, it is much warmer, so I've added my orange. But as I move around the sides, it becomes much cooler, and so I move into my purples.
My highlights are just white, but I am using a dry, unused coma brush to soften those edges. I would suggest that when trying to paint a white object, you also have reference to the same image in black and white. So if you can turn your reference photo into black and white, this will help you because it will split up any colour and value issues that you may have. Sometimes when you are looking hard to see the colour and value, what you are actually seeing is a temperature shift and the object is actually pretty narrow in value. So you overcompensate and throw out the value when really it was the temperature that needs adjusting. The cockatoo on the left is pretty much an example of this. It has a very narrow value range, but is full of temperature shifts. A good natural break for this video was between the cockatoos. After I'd done the blocking, I painted one cockatoo and then did another sitting on the second cockatoo, which I painted faster than the first one as I'd figured out all my painting issues in the first one. I'm painting the beak in exactly the same colours as the first bird. I'm using cadmium red and blue and then lightening where I need to with a bit of white. My darker areas are much warmer on this second bird than the first, so I'm adding much more orange to my purple. For the really dark areas underneath the wings, I'm using cadmium red and blue with a heavier lean to red. As I move around the front of the body, my paint mix becomes cooler, so I'm adding my purple. When I'm mixing paint on my palette, I tend to mix from pre-existing paint. So for example, as my paint transitions into a cooler purple, I will just add more purple plus white to my warmer orange mix. 
I find it easier to work in this way, but I have seen other artists keep their colours very separate. You have to work in a way that is best for you. There is no right or wrong. As I move further around that body, my grey gets cooler still. I am mixing blue with, with Elysian crimson plus white. This gives me a very cool purple because Elysian crimson is a cooler red than cadmium red. My highlights are white and I'm using my brush to blend the edges to make them softer. Around the eye, I am varying my temperature between warmer at the bottom and cooler purple at the sides and white at the top. Remember that white is cool too, so adding white to anything will naturally cool it down. Notice that any strong brushwork that is added is always softened. Your eye will always see a bird's plumage as soft. Cameras tend to sharpen everything, so always bear that in mind when working from a reference photo. Always keep referring back to the drawing as well. When you get into the throes of a painting, the drawing can easily go amiss. It doesn't matter how well you paint something, if the drawing is off, it will just look wrong. So always keep checking you haven't lost your drawing. I always reserve my smallest brushes for the detail and tend to use these in the later parts of the painting. Remember that small brushwork will naturally start tightening up a painting, so use them in areas that you want to be highly rendered. Notice how cool that eye now looks against the warmth of the head. It's the same value but I have used my coolest purple of Elysian crimson and blue and this really does help it to pop out. I'm using a rigger brush to paint in those highlights in the eye. A rigger brush is really good for dragging paint. They are also great for painting whiskers and things like that. To make that second parrot pop against my first, I need to vary my temperatures and make sure my values are correct. The chest of the first bird I painted is warmer than the wing where I am now adding my coolest purple. This helps to create a separation between my birds. One does not merge into the other, they appear separate and independent of each other. As I progress up the wing, it becomes warmer, so I am adding more orange to my mix. I am adding this same colour into the body area too.
My darker areas are my cadmium red and blue with a heavier leaning on the red. All the time I'm blending these colours into the rest of the paint. My highlights are in white again, which I'm blending using my coma brush. I'm adding areas of warmth into that cool purple. And having done that area already, I have found I need to readjust my darker areas in terms of value and also make them a bit warmer with a bit more orange. I am adding orange to my blue, but now I have a heavier leaning on orange. And I'm blending it back around the chest of the bird. If you think about this bird in terms of a simple shape, it is actually a cylinder. So think about what light does when it hits a cylinder. It's behaving in the same way. For that highlighted area around the neck, I am using my coolest purple. It is actually quite dark in value, but this is an example of where using a super cool temperature can trick your eye into thinking it is lighter than what it is. That is actually not much lighter than the colours around it. It is just much cooler. I'm now just painting the colour further up into the face as well. But my shadows are still not dark enough and I can see this by permanently standing back and comparing my painting to my reference photo. I need to keep adjusting until I have the correct value and I need to be very careful when blending that I don't lose all those lovely cool temperatures that I have already established.
I am trying to integrate that bird into its background as much as I am able to. But as I said before, there is a limit to how much I can do this because of my dry background. And that is it. Here is a finished painting. I thought also that I'd have a go at framing it. So please join me for next week's video when I will show you how I decorated this frame in an attempt to complement the artwork. I hope you have found today's video useful and will join me for next week's video. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will see examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.